let me talk a little bit about my objectives for this lesson. Uh, I do it usually the second day of school. And uh, the reason for doing it is because one of the mistakes I think we make in education, and this is a big mistake, you know, when kids come back after summer break, believe it or not, they're usually a little excited to be there. You know, I mean, they've been in there, they've done, you know, they've played all the Nintendo they can play, they've done everything they want. Those, I mean, as parents, if you're parents, you know what I mean, those last couple weeks before school, I mean, they're pretty much climbing the walls. So they're really kind of anxious to do something. So they really come there, uh, in that first week at least, fairly open-minded and really kind of eager. So what do we do? We bore them to tears. I mean, we do things, and it's not really our fault. Part of it's the nature of the beast. You know, there are things you've got to do. Your principals are going to tell you. You've got to issue textbooks. You know, you've got to do, and there's, there's all these things that you have to do to take care of uh, and go over re rules and procedures and, so, and these kind of things that, that have to be done. Try to. Uh, my uh, advice to you is if you've got something, I, I, uh, I, here's my quote, dazzle them early. And, and uh, because of something I talked about last time, that kids kids are great. <laughs> kids kids no ki <laughs> kids are great in one way. We talked about this before. You know, when you get kids with you, they'll stick with you through thick and thin. You know, I teach civics, which is not always the most interesting. At least I'm teaching right now, which is not always the most fascinating topic. And when you, and but if you get them if you get them with you, they'll hang. You know, when you're doing that electoral college stuff, they're like, mm, okay, okay, when's well, the good stuff coming? But they'll hang with you because you got them. But if you turn them off. One of the sad things about education is when you lose a kid, it's not impossible, but it's very, very, very difficult to get them back. Well, how do you get them to start with? By doing something that kind of makes them excited about being in your class. So what I suggest that first week, the first day if you can, try to avoid, postpone, you know, you know, like our principal tells us, I, you know, I, I should, maybe I shouldn't tell you this, but our principal usually tells us, textbooks will be issued on day two. We get a little, we get a little handout that tells us when you do different stuff. I, never, I don't do it. I disobey my principal. I do it like on day five because there are things I want to do. And what I do on day two is the lesson I'm going to demonstrate with you now. Now, there's, 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 there's a couple of reasons I do it or, or several objectives I have in mind. One is to kind of um, do something that I think the, the students will hopefully get, you know, get something out of the class or where they'll at least remember this. Uh, lesson and do something fair, more than just hand, passing out textbook and going over rules. Uh, secondly, last time we talked about with, with classroom management, we talked about setting that framework, you know, building that wall of what, what's expected. What I do, rather than lead a, read a list of rules to my kids, this lesson that I do can kind of do the same thing, I think. Now, there are many other, th those are some of the, my objectives. There's objectives I have for my students, which is hopefully that they'll learn about this important concept that we're going to talk about for a few minutes tonight. The lesson that I do with them, we're going to talk for a while tonight about something called tact. And the way that I introduce this concept to my students is I usually write the word on the board, like I'm doing for you, and I'll usually ask them if they have any, if they've ever heard of it. Most of the time they haven't. Uh, I'll ask them if, they, um, if they've heard maybe of tactful. And sometimes they have, and, and so I'll say, well, you know, can you think of any examples of tactful? If they give you an example, which likely they won't, it's that same cliched example, which is, oh, that's like when your friend buys a new uh, dress and they ask you what it looks like, and you think it looks lousy, but you don't want to hurt their feelings, so you say it looks good. And yeah, that's tact, but it's also the wimpy definition of tact. So, th so I said, well, let's, let's see if we can come up with a definition. And I had them come up with one. And then I said, well, let's look at the, the dictionary definition. The dictionary definition of tact says it's the delicate, if you can read this, you'll be doing real well, the delicate perception of the right thing to say or do in a situation without offending. Isn't that, that's beautiful. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> handwriting, yes. Handwriting 101. Um, Okay. Now, and by the way, the problem, and here's a here, here's another frequent mistake that that that, that teachers make. Okay, let's say, okay, that's it. This is important, man. I want everybody to know this. We have a test on this tomorrow. Go home and learn this tact. And and they come in the next day and we say, okay, what's tact? And they say the delicate perception of the right thing to say or do in the situation without offending. Great, y'all get a hundred. Okay. Problem with that? What's the problem? Yeah, exactly. Okay, they have no idea what it's all about. And so be aware of that when you're teaching vocabulary because what, what, no matter what subject area you're in, vocabulary is always going to be a part of it. Realize that, that when you're getting kids to memorize
memorize this set of words equals this word, they may not have a clue what that's all about. But that's, and that's when, okay, when we get a clue, then we start moving into those higher levels of learning. Okay, you know, it's when I get them to memorize that definition, I'm at that, I'm at Bloom's first level, right? Knowledge, they're, they're, they're regurgitating. They're giving it right back to me. So the first thing I want to do, in fact, here's another mistake we make. Let's, let's look at this beautiful uh, definition again. Uh, <laughs> what, a, a problem, the first problem I'm going to have with, uh, eight, uh, let's say I'm teaching eighth grade right now, for example. Can you see a problem that I might, that my eighth graders might have with that definition? Reading it. Reading it, okay, that might be a problem. Anything else? Okay, and uh, other sites boom in too if you'd like. Uh, yeah, definitions of word. What what words do you think they might have a problem with here? Perception. perception. Yeah, they're not gonna they're not gonna have a clue as to what perception is. The other one they might have trouble with is maybe offending. So what I'm gonna do is probably say, okay, well let's let's talk, before you know, before we go any further, this is what the dif this is what the dictionary says. Well, let's talk about this. What does perception mean? And I'll ask my students, and, and usually someone, will, one of them maybe will have heard of it, and they'll give me, a, you know, uh, you know we, we talk about, you know, no, you know, sensing or knowing ahead of time, and, you know, these, diff these different kinds of, 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 of synonyms that might be something that they, that they can understand. And then without offending, we're talking about, you know, uh, right, good, upset with the dress stuff, with the dress thing, hurt feelings. And uh, next page. Let's uh, uh, write it. <laughs> mad. Okay, is what I'm trying to get it. Make make mad. So you know, with now now that we've now that we've exploring the definition a little bit, we're starting to have maybe a better, hopefully a better sense of. Oh, okay, so with TAC we're talking about sort of sensing or knowing ahead of time what the right thing is to say or do in a situation so that we're not upsetting someone or making a man or hurting their feelings with our old dress type uh, definition. Okay, now, my feeling is that TAC will help students in situations when they're dealing with the groups of people that they come in contact with on a daily basis and who can fill in our, my little dashes over here for me. What groups, any, any, any group can chime in here? Teachers. Okay, teachers. Peers. 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 Parents. Okay, my contention is, and uh, I've had the opportunity of working with students in a lot of different capacities, not only as a teacher. I have four sons of my own. Uh, I've uh, worked at a rec center. I've done some coaching. And uh, my, my, my belief is and, and that 90% of the problems that students have getting along with their parents, home situation, friends, uh, teachers, is not so much that they are, are, these are horrible kids doing horribly things wrong, but they just don't know how they don't have a clue how to use tag. Now, this is a lesson. I remember I'm talking about this to you, but I'm, I'm telling my students the same thing. So the, the, word, the, the wording that I'm using tonight with you, keep in mind, is exactly what I'm going to do if I'm teaching a class. The same, same kind of thing. So I said, so let's talk about, you know, if, so this thing is pretty important if it can cause problems with all these, these different situations. So what I'll, what I'll usually have my, what I'll try to do to kind of explain this in a little more detail is to try to give, you know, role play this. You know, let, let's look at specifically one area, and let's start with the um, the students, and uh, let's start with students and peers. And I'll usually ask my students. I'll say, let's say that you're a guy, and your your best friend's girlfriend just broke up, and he, you're you know you're, you're walking down the hall and you run into your friend, and you don't know quite what to say, and you say, uh, "Hey, I hear your girlfriend wised up and dumped you." I, and I ask my students, I say, "What do you think would happen?" And whenever I ask that question in class, someone goes, I say, yeah, yeah, that's right. Now I say, now think about this for a minute. Do you think the person that, that said that was trying to get popped? I mean, is that what they, you know, what, what happened here? Okay, and the problem was, was that, you know, Tack was saying is a delicate perception, the right thing to say or do in a situation without offending or upset. Was that the right thing? Is, was that probably the right thing to say in that particular situation without making somebody mad? No. Okay. So you know. Wh so what tact is, and you know, teaching middle school students, and when you're in, if you're in your practice in middle school, man, you can have a lot of fun with this because you know, middle schoolers are not naturally really tactful. You know, in fact, what tact is all about, and I tell them this, you know, tact, uh, and of course, not all adults are tactful, but tact to me is sort of building that little bridge in your head, 
that we're between brain and mouth? Because what happens, people that aren't tactful, what happens is, and that's what this guy did, you know, he thought he, this thought entered brain and came out mouth. If he'd taken the time to build that little dam in there and say, wait a minute, if I say his girlfriend, like, you, know, it, you know, what might he, how might he react to this? You know, he wouldn't have said that. And that's what tact is. It's sort of learning how to build that little bridge in there so that before I say something, you know, let me think about it for a minute. Hold it in there for a minute. It's like a faucet, you know, faucet brain, you know, gotta put that stopper in there. Okay, so that before, I'm, before I, I say that thing, let me think for a minute, is this the best thing to do in that particular situation? Uh, uh, middle school age girls, you know, we had that situation, you know, th these are, you know, I mean, unique creatures. Um, I mean, they, these are, these run, they, they run the gambit of emotions from, I mean, I mean, literally, where they're laughing one minute and in tears the next. And, you know, I have a student come up there in the class literally in tears. You know, what's the matter? Well, I'm, you know, my best friend and I are not talking. Well, what happened? Well, they were saying this stuff about me. I said, well, tell me what happened. Well, you know, the, the, the um, uh, they, someone said they said this stuff about me, and, and and so I said this stuff about them. I said, wait a minute, hold up, back up. Okay, someone said who said you know such and such, uh, and said that your friend said this about you. Yeah, and so and what and you did what? Well, I started saying this stuff about them. I said, well, okay, now wait a minute. Is there? Can you think of a better way you might handle this? You know, and and they'll well, yeah, I guess I I could have gone to them. I said, yeah, they're your friend. Maybe you went to them and said, hey, you know, I was really upset that you know I heard that you'd said this and. And, and they say, well, yeah, yeah, you know. And so, I, and I've had students do this. Go to the person who initially said this. And what do you think the response was? I don't think I've ever had some girl out that when, when they went to the, the friend that the, the response, yeah, they didn't say it. You know, so, so, why did, so what happened? Somebody wanted to see the girl get, get upset, so they made up the story the friend said. I mean, kids are like that. I mean, middle school students do that kind of stuff. They're not always the kindest, you know, kinds of kids. So, you know, so that, but the point is that, you know, Trying to get them to think about, okay, how can I deal with my friends? Okay, now, let's look at that, that second relationship here, students and parents. Uh, and, and, you know, again, I'm a parent, and uh, it's a good, it's a, I, maybe a good point. I, I mentioned to them that the, the toughest time sometimes to be tactful is when someone is not being tactful to you. But you know, and but you know, that's that's a learned skill too. And I said, but and remember, parents aren't always tactful. I mean, I've had a hard day at work sometimes, and gone home and said something like this to my kids. You know, you know, your room looks like a pigsty. I want you to go clean it up now. Which is probably in the not most tactful kind of parenting. You know, but you know the but I, I, I and I ask my students. I say, now, what if your what if your your dad or mom's coming to you and says something like that, and you're watching a movie. Movie's almost over. You want to see the end of the movie? I said, you know, what do you do? I said, I said, now, well, let's suppose you said, you know, I don't clean it right now. I'm watching a movie. Ever see a kid do that? Mm -hmm. that, <laughs> that does happen. Okay. I, and I asked my students. I say, what, do you, what, what are your parents going to do if you say that? And they, they're saying, well, they say, you know, you're not going to, you know, no, no, you're not, gonna, you're not watching a movie. You're going to clean your room. So, I mean, they know what's going to happen. I said, okay. Well, so let's think about this for a minute. What if we use tact here? Can you think of a way that you might use tact? You know, suppose you know you're really trying to see that in this movie, and they'll they'll you know they'll they'll contemplate it for a minute, and then they'll someone will usually say something. Like, well, yeah, you know, I guess I could say something like you know I know my room's a mess, but you know if you let me watch on the movie, I promise I'll clean it there. Great. Okay, that's a more tactful answer. Now, does that mean they're going to get to see that in the movie? I ask my students this. No. You know, I mean, there's you know, no guarantees in life. Sorry. You know, that's just, you know that's that's the reality. But what tact what tact does for you? is that it increases your odds. You know, and, I said, and, and what, what else you have to do with tact is you need to think about what are my objectives here. You know, if my objective is to tick off my parents, then say I'm not doing it now and I'm watching a movie. You know, but if what you really want to do, if your real objective is to see the end of that movie, then by using tact you're going to increase your odds of having that happen. Okay, now let's look at the fun, and the next one's fun, and what's, what's going to be fun about the next one is this is the one, and, which is going to be a lot more fun than this class, it's going to be when you're actually in the, in the schools, and this is when you're going to see that third relationship, the students to teachers, because you're going to see some of the things that I describe here, and it's really sad because I, I've seen so many students who got in trouble, I'm, I've seen students suspended, and I tell my students this, I'm, t again, I'm telling them exactly the way, or telling you exactly the way I tell them, I've seen students su suspended from school who literally did nothing wrong. They didn't do something horribly wrong. They were suspended because they didn't know how to handle a situation. 
Uh, so, and, and these people that are tactless, I mean, you really feel sorry for them because they, these are the guys or, or the girls that are walking around with those chi giant chips on their shoulder line doing nothing, you know, and they can't figure out why they're getting in trouble. And, and typically that's why, because they just don't have a clue how to deal with things. So again, I'm going to role play for my students. Uh, so I say, let's, let's say that, you know, um, I say, imagine yourselves, I ask my students this, to imagine themselves that you're a teacher and you have two students who come into class. And student A walks in and he says, um, Mr. Jones, we've got a band concert tonight and the band director wants to know if we get out a few minutes early. Would you sign this pass for me? Now, I said, Is it, if you were the teacher, what do you think you'd do in a situation like that? Cooperate. Yeah, and the students say, I'd sign the pass. Yeah, yeah. I said, so would I. You know, that's a good, good answer. And then the, uh, the other situation, you know, here's our guy that, you know, walks in. Hey, Mr. Jones, I get out of class early today. I got band practice. Sign this. See. Okay. <laughs> Now I say, and I say, you got to remember that as teachers, I said, you know, I'm not just a teacher, I'm a human being. And when someone says that, you know, the little hairs on the back of your neck stand up, you know, and, you, and I'm probably going to say something like, you're not going anywhere, sit down. We let him go. We let him go. And they don't really understand the difference. Okay? And again, the difference is that, again, not just knowing what the right thing to say was in that particular situation. Now, this is what I'm telling my students, but again, what, what's, 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 my, what's my other objective here? What am I doing? Okay, I'm teaching them tag, but I'm also modeling what? Appropriate. Exactly. I'm modeling appropriate and inappropriate behavior. So that's, I mean, that, you know, that's, so again, you're, you're trying to do several objectives here at once. So, uh, or the other classic example, um, and this is, one, this is one you'll have fun with too because you'll probably see this. How do you handle the situation when there's, there's someone misbehaving? And I say, and I have to ask my students this, suppose you're a teacher again, we're putting you in this role today, and you've got a student who's, who's misbehaving. You know, how do you deal with that? I say, one of the things that you might do is to, uh, and I'm, I'm moving off camera, is you might move over to a, um, proximity. yeah, proximity, which you, it, I'm glad someone knows the word. You know, you'll, you'll get that in your methods classes. You move to that area. Let's uh, do a little student camming here. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to move to the area where, um, <laughs> yeah, okay, um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to move to the area, and that's, that's, that's proximity. There's still, there's noise coming on, going on in this area, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to teach a class. What I might, my next step would probably be, again, as a t and by the way, one of the things that you're going to see, I hope you don't see it, but you may see some untactful teaching. And you're going to see a situation like, I'm tired of your face, I don't want to see you in here anymore, get out of here. I mean, I've seen that occur in a classroom. And the problem with that, by the way, and it, besides being untactful teaching, it's the, one of the reasons it's a big mistake is because you're going to see them. <laughs> I mean, don't say stuff that you, you, know, that you can't, don't, don't, don't make a threat that you can't follow up on. Because when you tell a kid, you know, I don't want to see, I'm not going to see anymore, yeah, you are. I mean, you may see him in 10 more minutes after you send him down to the administrator and he sends him right back to you. So don't, don't make a threat like that that you can't follow through on. And you don't have the authority as a teacher to put someone out of your room. I mean, other, I mean you can refer them, but I mean, as far as a temporary uh, or a permanent thing, uh-uh. So you've got to, you know, you know so, so how do you deal with that? That's probably not too tactful teaching. So if I've got a problem with a student, problem, let's say I've got, you know, I've got a couple of people talking. What I'm, about the most tactful thing I can do, and I can't, you know, I, I want the class to keep moving. If it's a continual problem, the, the best thing to do, by the way, is see if you can get them out, you know, call them up, call, yeah, get them outside on their own. We talked about one-on-one. -on -one. That works real well. But if, if class is being disturbed and there's really a disturbance going on, I try to keep class going, and I just fill out my little tactful uh, detention form that we looked at last time, those you know, student-teacher conferences, and I'm going to walk over and just place one on the student's desk and try to keep the lesson going. While I'm, and that, I've called as little attention as I can to that student, and he's, you know, but he knows that, you know, that, you know, he can look in the, yeah, he knows he's busted, exactly. Okay, so, um, once, once I've done that, there are, there are a couple of things that can happen. You know, this guy, and, you know, again, how, does this, how do you deal with this as a student? What if, what if you got that notice, and it wasn't you, it was you the first time, but it was actually the, the person behind you? Now, I ask my students that, and usually, anyone want to guess what their first, uh, or, or what they think they should do? And I ask them, what, what do you do? You know, you, got, you just got this detention and one you. It was a guy behind you. Yeah, I got, for those people not uh, in, in this room, we've got someone pointing to the person behind us. Yeah, and that's what they say. They say, yeah, I'd say it's a guy behind me. I say, okay, is that the right thing to say or do without offending someone? Would that offend someone? Yeah, how about the guy behind you? Yeah, that would offend them. So that might not, might not be the best thing. So okay, can you think of any other way to do it? And, usually, and they'll say something like, well, I'd say it wasn't me. I said, you're taking class time then. 
you know. And then, and I've never had, I've never, I've taught this lesson many times, and I've never had a time that I taught it that a student didn't raise their hand and say, "Well, I guess you could come up after class." Great, you know. And that's, and, and what's great about this, and watch for this in, in practicum too, because whenever you see one of these things going on, and you may see one, it's quite a show because everybody's watching. You know, I mean, the whole class, like, oh, what's going to happen? I mean, it's like it's a, it's the biggest show in town. You know, so. So that's why, you know, so you want to avoid that if you can. And that's why, again, coming up after, you get rid of the show. And I say, so what's, what's the advantage of doing that? Okay, so let's say, again, we got our Mr. Tactful, Mr. Tactful. So let's say I gave out two detention notices here, or two confidence forms. Okay, so, and we get Mr. Tactful who comes up and he says, uh, Mr. Jones, you know, I, uh, you gave me this notice, but it really wasn't me. It was the guy behind me. I say, the worst thing, what's the wor worst case scenario then? Is the teacher probably going to say something like, "Look, I wouldn't have given them to you if I hadn't seen you. I want you to serve them. The, I want you to be here." That's the worst thing that's going to happen to you. What you, what might happen is the teacher may say, "Hey, look, you were talking the first time. I heard noise. I figured it was you. If it happens again, it'll be two days. We'll let it slide this time." And and because for for one thing, again, you've got a lot more flexibility when it's just you. You wouldn't want to do that in front of the class because that's backing down. But when it's just you one and one on a student, you can do that. It gives you a lot more flexibility too as a teacher. Or, then we've got our second guy who comes up, you know, Mr. Tacklish, you know, or or he gives you one of these things, you know, when you get that notice. You know, let me see what he's been given this notice, and you may see this. You ever seen one of those? Or the classic, and you may see one of these, I ain't coming. Okay, and, and I tell my students, I say, and that I, that I ain't coming was, is pretty, pretty famous, but it's also a little, um, and, I, I, and I hesitate using this word, and I, and I tell my students, I say, I hate using this word with you today, but it's, it's really a little stupid. And I say, and, and think about why for a minute, because I say, you know, when a teacher's in front of the class, what's really kind of understood is that they're in charge. Okay, and when the and when students misbehaving, what they're really saying is, no, you're not. <laughs> and so when I'm using my proximity or I'm giving my my not my uh, conference form notice, I'm saying yes, I am. And so when they're saying I ain't coming or they're balling it up, they're saying no, you're not. So what you got there is that classic little power struggle going on, right? So you know, so I said now, so if you say that, if you use that technique, let's say again, imagine yourself that you're the teacher. I tell my students this, and you've you've given someone a detention. And, and they've said they ain't coming. What are your choices as a teacher? And usually, you know, I've, I've had this answer. It's all, you know, you have the, the wise guy. You know, somewhere he's saying, well, I'd say don't come. I'd say, well, that's exact, that certainly is a choice. You're exactly right. I could say, don't come. And i say, is there any problem if I made that my choice? Now, this might shock you, but again, I've taught this lesson many, many times, and every time I've done it, someone will raise their hand and say, well, you know, you kind of lose respect to the class. I said, exactly right. Yeah, I said, so, so that's your, so I said, so that's my one choice. I can say don't come and lose the respect of the class, which no teacher worth their salt is probably going to do. Or, what's my other choice? That'll be two days. Or, we'll just go down the office and see about that. Or, you know, I, and, it was, so, and that's why that choice, I ain't coming, or, you know, throwing it up, throwing them, you know, balling up and throwing it away, is not a real, you know, smart choice because it puts the teacher in a position where they have only two, only really one option. All they've got to do is they've got to take a more severe step or lose the respect to the class. So, and, and the, the neat thing about this, and this is great, believe it or not, I've had this happen because I do this the second day, kid comes in late in the year, had this happen two or three times. Uh, gave, a, gave, a, gave a detention notice to or a conference form to this kid coming, coming late in the year. He says, I ain't coming. The whole class broke out laughing. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, really, to have, and the guy's like, what is this going on here? You know, but, I mean, so, you know, they, 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 they learn from that. So, and so, but anyway, this guy, he's the, the, the I ain't coming guy. You know, he's, he's, he's ranting and raving. And so we'll go down the office and see about that. I, and so he goes down to the principal's office, and the principal says, what's going on? He says, I want to do anything. I want to do anything. It was going to harm me. Settle down. I said, I got to settle down. Suspension. Okay, so now we're back to our initial point. Here's this guy, you know, two guys, both given this conference form or detention, and, and one of them, you know, one of them ends up scot-free, and the other one ends up in suspension. Why? Because of tag. And I said, so that's why it's such a valuable tool. Now, when I'm doing this in a social studies class, 
you know, you might say, well, you know, and I do this, it doesn't matter what I'm teaching. I've taught, you know, I've done this with world geography, world history, ninth, eighth grade, eighth grade, seventh grade, you know, I've done this with all different groups. You know, and you might say, well, you know, does this really fit with a curriculum? Uh, it, to be honest, you know, tact isn't in my curriculum. But to me, if I can take 20 minutes or so and have my students get along better with their parents, get along better with their peers, and have a better relationship with the teachers at school, that might be a 20 minutes well spent. So it's, it's, it's all, and, and, and plus, remember that's not my only objective. My most important objective probably with this is to, again, build in that box. You know, where what I'm trying to do is establish, okay, the, this is the perimeters of what is acceptable. And that way I don't have to pick that, you know, like we said, the, the, the sacrifice kid we talked about last time, I think, the kid that you just nail. Because right? they already know, okay, if, if I do this, and, and it gets them thinking about it. Now, the tough thing with a lesson like this is, well, how do you evaluate something like this? Okay, there are a couple ways to do it for the modeling, and I'm going to show you this written up in a, in a for, lesson plan format as I mentioned earlier. Uh, to model it, sometimes, sometimes what I'll have the students do is I'll have them get in groups and say, okay, think of some situations on your own of how they could be handled tactfully or non-tactfully. Sometimes I've even had them do skits where they acted out, you know, someone being tactful or not, and they love that. I mean, they, just, they, they, they love doing the skits to, to, to where they get to act non-tactful. I mean, that's great. They get to, you know, you know act, and that's okay because we're, we're modeling that, that behavior. So that's one way of doing it. And, and the, the next thing I tell them, the, the, the final evaluation for this is I tell them what I want you to do with this to make sure you understand this and are thinking about it is I want you to go home over the next couple of weeks and just think about tact. And I said, when you're in a, and I, what I want you to do is just kind of watch, observe, and it could, it said, it could be your, it can be your cla other classmates, it can be with your family, it can be in any kind of situation, but observe and think about tag. And I want you over the next couple of weeks, you're going to see a situation where someone gets into a bad situation by not using tact, or you're going to see a situation where someone avoids tag, avoids a bad situation rather by by using tag. And I want you to write that down. And so the assignment for this lesson is you're going to write me a composition, a, a, what I call a tax sheet, you know, where you're telling me, telling me this, you know, what happened. And the stuff they write is incredible. I mean, they, uh, there's a lot of stuff like, you know, my mom said this, and I said this to my mom, and my mom said this, and I started to say this, but I remember what we talked about in class, and I said this instead, and my mom looked surprised, you know. And, <laughs> and that word surprised, I mean, that's probably one of the most frequent words that comes out in these tag papers, you know, because, you know, again, the, you're not used to that, that kind, of, kind of reaction. But um, it, it's, 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 uh, it's kind of a multi-person objective. Now, how can you write that up? Okay, this is the lesson, and I'll, I'll, if you don't have a copy of this in your course pack, I'll try to get Andrea to send you one of these. This is the lesson that I just modeled, written up in that Madeline Hunter format, getting the attention of the students, you know, ask the students, you know, you know what, um, what, people, what groups of people they come in contact with, that's how you'd, and then stating the objectives, uh, write, write the objective on the board, or students will be able to define tact and explain how using it causes problems in, in parent-student, student-student, and teacher-student relationships. Teaching the lesson, uh, modeling and demonstration, demonstrating, which is kind of what I did, modeling. Uh, check for understanding while, uh, uh, while examples are role, uh, role played. Ask students what the reaction might be when the tactful and untactful approach is used. Uh, guided practice, give students examples of situations. This is another way I've done it, uh, which might occur, and ask the students how the situation might be handled tactfully. Uh, independent practice, have the students provide examples of possible situations of how they could be solved. That's where they create them on their own. And then closure, take it home and use it, okay, which is uh, as a, the assignment I talked about where they actually write something about TAC. Um, the important point about this lesson plan is, again, uh, that, that I want to make tonight is, um, and again, I'll, get you, I'll definitely get you a copy of that, is uh, I, I think an important, an important point to make here is that lesson that you just saw was written years after I'd already done the lesson. And I, and I think that's a key point to make because I think, again, as a teacher, you naturally are going to go through those steps. And I think that's maybe, maybe one of the most key points of tonight, that, you know, to think, you know, if you start thinking about, well, how am I going to do this or what, you know, just do, you know, if you think about how you would, na how a, 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 the, a normal lesson would naturally progress, you're probably going to follow those steps. You know, it's just, it's, it's, uh, uh, and that's what, that's what you want to do. Modeling or, or, or the demonstration lesson is probably more important than, than worrying about writing it into that format. And so again, the simple, simple lesson plan is fine. And uh, the, the eight step thing.